be ready 10 seconds to go start from the principles that have been stated out by the constitution bench it is perceptible that a tribunal is established under a statute to adjudicate upon disputes arising under the said statute the tribunal under the rdb act has been established with a specific purpose and we have already focused on the same its duty is to see that the disputes are disposed of quickly regard being had to the larger public interest it is also graphically clear that the role of the tribunal has not been fettered by technicalities the tribunal is required to bestow attention and give priority to the real controversy before it arising out of the special legislations as has been stated earlier it is really free from the shackles of procedural law and only guided by fair play and principles of natural justice and the regulations formed by it the procedure of tribunals has been elaborately stated in section 19 of the rdb act it is apt to note here that section 34 of the act bars the jurisdiction of the civil court it reads as civil court not to have jurisdiction no civil court shall have jurisdiction to entertain any suit or proceeding in respect of any matter which a debts recovery tribunal or the appellate tribunal is empowered by or under this act to determine and no injunction shall be granted by any court or other authority is respect of any action taken or to be taken in pursuance of any power conferred by or under this act or under the recovery of debts due to banks and financial institutions act 1993 Section 34 of the RDB Act provides that the said act would have overriding effect. We have referred to the aforesaid provisions to singularly highlight that the genuine purpose with which the tribunals have been established is to put the controversy to rest between the banks and the borrowers. and any third party who has acquired any interest they have been conferred jurisdiction by special legislations to exercise a particular power in a particular manner as provided under the act it cannot assume the role of a court of different nature which really can grant liberty to initiate any action against the bank it is only required to decide the matter that comes within its own domain taking note of a submission made at the behest of the auction purchaser and then proceed to say that he is at liberty to file any action against the bank for any omission committed by it has no sanction of law the said observation is wholly free of jurisdiction and undoubtedly is totally unwarranted in obtaining in the factual matrix therefore we have no hesitation in deleting the observation namely liberty is also given to the auction purchaser to file action against the bank for any omission committed by it as we have directed for deletion for the same reasons we also set aside the judgment of the high court whereby it has declined to interfere with the grant of liberty by the drat this being the only prayer by mr jan it is answered in the affirmative in his favor by stating that such grant of liberty was not within the domain of the tribunal regard being 
had to its limited jurisdiction under such special legislation and further specially when the bank was not a party to the compromise before parting with the case we are obliged to deal with another aspect DRAT is required to adjudicate the matter in an apposite manner it is hearing an appeal from an order passed by the DRT it cannot afford to pass a laconic order learned counsel for the auction purchaser endeavored hard to impress us that the order being a new one this court should set aside the same and remit the matter to the drat the said prayer has been seriously opposed by mr jain learned senior counsel for the appellant bank and mr dham learned counsel for the borrower two aspects weigh in our mind not to take recourse to such a mode namely are the auction purchaser has not challenged the order passed by the drat before the high court nor has he come to this court and further mr jain has restricted his argument only with regard to grant of liberty and with the efflux of time the bank has realized its money and the property has changed hands it can be stated with certitude that it is absolutely unnecessary to direct the drat to proceed with the appeal de novo hence we refrain from adopting the said course resultantly the appeal is allowed to the extent indicated here in above in the facts and circumstances of the case there shall be no order as to costs the appeal is allowed as for the provision of the law and procedure enshrined in various acts as such stop